This is Witchbase News for Friday the 11th of March 2022 ...I'm Commander Burr. In Elite Dangerous News this week ...update 11 and carrier interiors are delayed until next week ...and all console development of Elite Dangerous Odyssey is cancelled. To make sure you don't miss any of our videos hit like and subscribe and remember to click the little bell icon and select all notifications and if you'd like to help directly support this channel you can also join our Patreon via the link in the video description. This was a difficult show to put together today given the gravitas of the news that we're delivering. Out of respect for the reeling console community commanders we felt it best to just cover off the absolute two biggest most important news stories today only and nothing else. So without further ado then. Update 11 for Elite Dangerous Odyssey that was to introduce the much anticipated fleet carrier interiors was previously scheduled to arrive on Tuesday this week. However, Frontier delayed that update at the last minute and then later rescheduled it completely with the patch now being earmarked for next week. Bruce was actually asked on the forum post if it would arrive before Tuesday evening to which he replied ideally it would but he couldn't confirm for definite. Along with the announced delay to patch 11 it was confirmed in a forum post by the community management team that the new modules being added to fleet carrier interiors ...specifically Vista Genomics and Pioneer Supplies ...will still require that the carrier visit an admin system to have them installed in line with how the system currently works for carriers exterior features. Whilst this isn't an issue for many fleet carriers based in and around the bubble or colonia a great many fleet carriers are permanently anchored far out in the deep black. There's at least one in every sector of the galaxy in fact. Quite literally there's even at least one carrier stationed at Beagle Point the furthest point possible away from Sol at 65,279 light years. Bringing those carriers home to the nearest admin system opening the shutters on the Vista Gen outlet and then sending them back again represents a frankly colossal logistical undertaking. The Spanch fleet carrier routing website estimates it to be around 94 jumps consuming nearly 9000 tons of tritium and taking around 4 days of constant jumping to get from Beagle Point to Colonia in fact. No small undertaking indeed. I have to admit our initial reaction here was one of some significant concern on what this would mean to those stationed out in the deep black and in particular the individual commanders of the deep space support array network of permanently anchored fleet carriers. After reaching out to a few of those commanders however and indeed hearing from some here in the burr pit it's clear that there are some at least who actually relish and welcome the logistical challenge and commitment that this event brings. Elite has always been a game of many different things to many different people, one commanders individual experience being very different to another. In point of fact that's one of the features that often makes it quite divisive when it comes to differing opinions on the relative worth of the game. If a fair few commanders are looking forward to the challenge of moving and refitting their carrier then who am I? to deny them that gameplay loop. Indeed in the pit itself an initiative has now been started to swap out one carrier for a newly fitted duplicate whilst simultaneously refueling a third permanently anchored carrier for its journey back to civilization as a player driven community event. That's some awesome player driven emergent gameplay right there. We covered off exactly what to expect with carrier interiors specifically in a recent video ...I've linked to that on screen now in case you missed it. The patch is also bringing a new mission type with it so watch out for that when the update drops. Arthur made mention of settlement defence missions in his statement to the community before Christmas so it is a possibility that that is what is arriving next week. Right then on to that announcement from FDev. In case you missed it around 4pm UK time yesterday David Braben posted a statement to the Elite Dangerous website regarding the future of the game on consoles. The short version is that the company is cancelling all future development of Elite Dangerous Odyssey on all 
the consoles. From this point onwards Elite Dangerous Odyssey is a PC game only. Horizons will continue to be supported on all the consoles but only with what the statement refers to as quote critical updates unquote. In layman's terms that equates to patches and fixes where necessary but no further onward development of the game will happen on any of the console platforms. Without a shadow of a doubt this news has come as a colossal hammer blow to the console community that has been waiting for Odyssey to be released on their platform of choice since it was put on hold following the troubled release of Odyssey on the PC in May last year. The pain being felt is quite acute. With so many hours invested into a live service game that is now to all intents and purposes no longer a live service game continuing to play while simultaneously seeing the game continue to expand on the PC will absolutely understandably be completely intolerable. For many the fact that this decision has been made by Frontier will be bad enough but the added burden of having to wait a full year for this disappointment to be layered on top will leave the bitterest of aftertastes. Indeed very sadly we've already seen a good many console commanders leave the game today with an expressed intent to also sever any future relationship with Frontier developments or their products. Honestly a completely understandable sentiment. The specific wording of Davids statement noted that Elite Dangerous is a game close to his heart and that this decision had weighed heavily on that heart and of that I have no doubt. The statement goes on to note that in order for the games story to progress they need to be able to focus on one codebase and importantly the decision they came to was with the long term future of Elite in mind. In response to multiple commanders asking on social media Frontier have said that they are investigating the possibility of porting over console accounts over and above just the liquidation of assets that they currently offer when moving platforms but that they had nothing to announce in that regard in the immediate. Obviously that's a less than equitable solution for many commanders but if it does work it would be nice to see it implemented to allow those individuals to continue forward with the game on the PC if they so desire. It's a shame that a system wasn't put in place before the announcement to catch at least some of the community as they fell but either way if we hear any more on that front we will of course bring it to you here. Ultimately it's clear that squashing Odyssey onto the consoles was just becoming too problematic and time consuming to continue with and was in danger of holding the rest of the game back as a result. Ultimately decisions at a corporate level like this come down to one simple equation for the company. How much money will it take to make this work and how much money will the company recoup from it as a result of that expenditure. If the equation tips too far in the wrong direction tough decisions are made. It's not personal, it hasn't anything to do with not caring, it's simple fiscal realities and that is sometimes a harsh mistress. So here's where we're at. After all the uncertainty of the last few months it's very clear from Davids statement that he personally is still very much engaged with the company and that the company still very much has a long term future for Elite Dangerous in mind. The game is continuing, the Elite Dangerous story is continuing but it's now continuing on PCs only. The stated intention from FDev was always to bring Horizons across to the Odyssey lighting, graphics, terrain and codebase etc. Publicly at least that initiative was put on hold immediately prior to the Odyssey launch. We've no reason to believe that eventually that won't happen but we're also waiting on an answer for this now as well. Again when we know more we'll report it here. With the console issue definitively answered we think it's likely that Frontier will end the relative silence that has prevailed since early January and comms from the community team will now reignite. It's been confirmed for example that Elite Dangerous live streams are starting up again next week. As we'd suspected Arthur's statement to the forums on the 9th of February was directly referencing the console situation and his needing resolution one way or another on the console issue before they could reasonably communicate with the community again. 
We also think it extremely likely that Frontier will want to move on very quickly from this now that any chance of Odyssey development has ceased on consoles. We know that the plan is to deploy carrier interiors into the game next week. David Braben specifically referenced the Elite Stories need to move forward unhindered by the requirement to support two codebases. We don't believe he's referencing just Galnet news when he speaks about the story. As I mentioned at the start this has been a tough one to write today. I kind of feel like Jerry Springer giving my thoughts at the end of the show like this and any platitudes I offer will be utterly empty to those that have, in essence, had their game ripped away from them. Of course Horizons continues on consoles but I've no doubt that for most it just won't be the same and that honestly makes us all here really sad indeed. Overall a tough day for all and not really the place any of us wanted to be. At the very least we do now know where the game is at for everybody left playing and instead of waiting we now finally have an answer and people can move forward from here with that knowledge in whatever way best suits them. How are you feeling about Elite today? Let us know in the comments below. That's it for now. Thanks very much for watching. We'll be back later this week with more videos. Until then 07 CMDRs follow the greens on the way out and do keep clear of the toast rack. We very much look forward to seeing you next time.